I'm always on the lookout for new and exciting distros to take a look at and today I found a new distro that is based on Fedora. Now if you are someone who's followed the channel for the last few weeks at least you'll know that my new daily driver is Fedora so when I found a distribution that is based on Fedora I got kind of excited because there really aren't too many out there that are based on Fedora itself. The distro we're going to take a look at today is called RizzyOS, R-I-S-I-O-S and it is very very close to Fedora if you don't know what you're looking for. So the first thing we're actually going to do this time is take a look at the installation because the installation will kind of show you exactly how close this is to Fedora and if you were to stop at the installation you'd probably think that it is just Fedora with some rebranding. So in the installation you'll see that basically what you get is a pop-up window asking if you want to try it or install it and that is the exact same window you would get if you were to install Fedora and then it will bring up the Anaconda installer. So once you move past that, it's the standard Fedora install. You select your drive, you move on to hitting the begin installation button and it installs. That's basically the entire installation process. Once you have rebooted after the installation is when you will make your user account and stuff like that. Now, unfortunately, I didn't record that part, but it is a little bit different than Fedora in that there's not like a button to enable third party repos there. But other than that, it is mostly the same as Fedora. Now, the reason why I said if you stopped at the installer, you'd think that this was just Fedora is because once you've moved past the installer and you've set up your account, it really does have some features that are different than Fedora itself. So the first one that you'll see is actually this. Now this is the welcome screen. Now if you've ever used Fedora before you'll know that Fedora does not have a welcome screen. It just doesn't. Now it does have a GNOME tour. If you are new to GNOME there is a little slideshow that GNOME will give you that will show you some of the new features that have been there since GNOME 40. It is not an impressive tour or welcome screen really. It's just there and not interactive at all. It just moves from one slide to another. Kind of boring. It does its job, but it's not that great. With Rizzy OS, you do have a welcome screen, and this thing is interactable, and it has a lot of really good things in it. So Now, like I said, when you have that initial setup, which I'm upset that I didn't record it, there is no slider there for you to enable third-party repos, which is something you do get with Fedora. And the reason why that's not here is because actually in the first steps area here, you have that ability right here in the welcome screen, which is, I don't know whether or not it is better or worse. I actually think it's probably a little bit better because there is an explanation here over what those repositories are. Whereas with Fedora, there's no explanation other than, hey, here's some third-party repos. Would you like them? Yes or no? That's basically all you get with the standard Fedora. So if you were to click on this, you will get something that looks like this. And this is called Rizzy Script. This is one of the things that they've done that is unique to Rizzy OS. And basically what it is, is a GUI front end for some scripts that they've written to do certain things. So it tells you exactly what it's going to do. And then it gives you the option to hit next. And then it gives you an option to select whether or not you want to install something called Tainted Codex. Now, I've never actually heard of Tainted Codex before or ha had them called that before. Maybe that is actually what they're called. But the way it explains it is it enables extra drivers that may be restricted in some countries. I'm going to go ahead and enable it. I'm not sure what it will actually install. It would be nice there if it would say what actual drivers it was going to install. It will ask for your password and then it will show you everything that it does, which is basically just a container around a terminal. Okay, once that's done, it will pop up and say that it has ran successfully. Now, something that is interesting here that it doesn't tell you that it's really going to do, at least that I noticed, is that it updates your system. So that initial run of DNF is always pretty slow. So I was expecting this to go pretty much faster than because it's just enabling the repos. But what it really does is it updates your system first and then adds the repositories. So it did take three or four minutes. Now, once we hit OK, that does go away. Now, another thing that the welcome screen does really well is that it lets you have an option to set up FlatHub. Now, out of the box, Fedora doesn't offer this at all. You have to go to FlatHub.org, you have to go to the Fedora part, and it will tell you how to enable FlatHub. With this, you can just hit this button here, it'll give you another script, you hit next, give it the password again, and it will enable FlatHub. Now, that one took 
very little time, which is exactly what you'd expect. Now, it does require you to reboot, which is a thing that FlatHub almost always forces you to do. However, when you do this on Fedora, you don't have to reboot. Most other distros do require reboot, so I'm not surprised to see that here, but that is based on Fedora is still a little weird. But anyways, we can go ahead and hit reboot later. We'll do that here in a second. Now, another cool thing about the welcome app, I'm no, I know I'm kind of focusing on the welcome app, but that's actually what makes this distribution a little bit unique in that it has this welcome app, something that Fedora doesn't have. Once you've done something in this first steps list, it goes away, so you can't do it again. And that's actually a good thing because some people would see that it's still there and then assume that it didn't actually work. Even if they saw the success message, they just assume that it wasn't there. Now, I'm assuming once you've hit this here, this is not something that you have to complete. You just hit that. If you close this, does that go away? No, that stays. Which, again, makes sense because that's not just a one-time thing, right? Like adding a repo or enabling Flat, FlatHub is. Now, I'm going to reboot the computer now to enable FlatHub, but I want to come back to the install web apps thing because that is another thing that Rizzy OS has that regular Fedora does not have. So from what I can tell, the web apps application here is forked from Linux Mint. So if you've ever used the web apps application from Linux Mint, you'll see that this is somewhat similar. Now, basically what this allows you to do is create applications, desktop applications from web pages. So you could say go to twitter.com and you can make that a web app and then you'd have Twitter as an application on your desktop. Another thing that is really cool about this is that there is an actually a store here for you to use. Now, it basically what this is is pre-made applications that are web apps. And you can see that there's actually a lot of stuff here for you to choose from. So like Apple Music, Deezer's here, Pandora's here, SoundCloud, Spotify, Web, Tidal, YouTube Music. That's just an audio category. There's also a lot of iCloud stuff here, other websites like Google Contacts, Gmailinator, though I'm not sure why I don't see Gmail here itself. Probably because there are email clients available for you. It may be here somewhere and I'm just not seeing it. There's also stuff here for development, education, which is, this is a front end for Google Drive. It's just, there are web games here as well, which is cool. So basically what this will do, and I'm going to go ahead here and install one of these things so that you can see it. Let me choose one. Let's go ahead and choose Notion. So we'll download that and it allows you to change the name, the icon, and all this stuff is completely customizable. You can also choose the category and what browser it would use although chromium seems to be the only option here for now and that basically what this category would do is allow you to choose where it shows up in your menu if you were to use a different menu now the gnome menu it's the gnome activity thing itself isn't categorized so that's not that big of a thing right but if you were to use something like arc menu or something like that, that actually uses categories you could then have this in the proper category so i'm going to go ahead and okay here and then we can see that Notion is now right here in the Applications menu, and it looks like an application, which is kind of cool, right? It's still just a website, but it acts like an application. And because it's an application, it will probably use the notification system from GNOME and all the stuff that comes with that, which is really, really nice. And of course, you're not limited to the stuff that's in the store. You can create your own as well. So if you wanted to use Twitter or Gmail or whatever, you could easily do that. You just click plus, name it, give it the address, give it an icon, put it in a category, and then hit OK. That's all you have to do. That's really cool. So actually, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to call this Twitter, and I'm going to do HTTPS colon slash slash Twitter dot com. And then... There's this button over here that will find icons for you, which is also really, really freaking nice. That means you don't have to go searching for an icon. And then you put it in a category, which internet is probably the best one. Hit OK. Now, if I open up the applications menu, go here, we can actually see that Twitter is right here. And it's now an application right on our desktop. That is cool. And again, it's a feature that Fedora does not have. Now, it doesn't mean you can't get it on regular Fedora. It'd be quite easy just to download this application because it does exist. I'm not sure if it's in the repos or not. I wouldn't know because I've never actually tried. But I, it wouldn't surprise me if it is. Going back to the welcome screen because we're still not done with the welcome screen. The quick setup here just gives you access to categories of applications you can download. 
So if you want to find specific applications you want to download, like things like Steam or whatever, you can hit this. It'll bring up a script that will then install stuff for gaming. What's weird here, and what I really wish they do, is tell you exactly what they're going to install, because they don't do that. So it just says, set up an environment for gaming. It doesn't say anything here, and it doesn't say anything here. It just asks, tells you whether or not it requires reboot or requires sudo. It doesn't say what it's actually going to install. So we're going to actually hit next here. Oh, I was just too impatient. I should have known that. You actually get to choose what it's going to install. So you can choose all the game launchers you want, the tools, stuff like that, like things like Discord, Piper, uh, Green with MV, stuff like that for the NVIDIA GPUs, RetroArch if you want to do emulations, DOSBox, stuff like that. Uh, that is much better than I thought it was. I was judging it way too soon. So that is really cool. I'm not going to install that because I'm on a VM, so it doesn't really make any sense. But I'm assuming all the rest of these are scripts as well. So you can launch this as a script. And we'll hit next here, and it will give you options for what Office suite you want to install, what email client, install Zoom, and install Microsoft Teams. Both of these are proprietary, obviously, but... They're very, 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 unfortunately popular. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, you can select these things. So if I'm going to select LibreOffice and I'll select Thunderbird because those are the two best ones. I'm going to go hit next and then it'll ask me for the password again and it will install those things. It's basically just a script to install those things. And it's going to be the same for all these other options as well. That's really cool. So those are the, the RISI scripts, which are things that the developer will have obviously had taken time to create and put a lot of effort into because they're definitely things that most people would want. So as you can tell so far, this is very much a distro that is focusing on making Fedora just a little bit easier for a new user to use because out of the box, when you install Fedora, if you get past the fairly antiquated installer and the setup process for your username, there's really no help right there for you. Yes, there's that tour, but it's not a great tour, right? It's not going to teach you how to install applications or how to set up FlatHub or even that FlatHub even exists. Like if you just installed Fedora and just started using it, you would have no clue that FlatHub even exists. Now you might learn about Flatpaks, but you wouldn't understand if you're brand new to Linux that FlatHub is even there, right? Because they never mention it. With this, it's here, it's right in your face in the welcome screen, and it explains what those things are, which is really nice. It really does a good job of focusing on people who probably are new to Fedora, which is, again, a really good thing. Now, we're finally done with the welcome screen. The rest of these tabs are for support and contribution. So we can close this as well. So we can see the things that were installed. So we have LibreOffice here now and Thunderbird. So those things were installed just like you would expect them to be. Now, other than that, the default applications are actually really, really minimum. You get the GNOME applications, and that's basically it. The only change that I've seen that they've made in terms of applications themselves is they, instead of using Firefox, they use Chromium. I'm not sure why they made that choice, but it's not a offensive choice. I would just uninstall it and install Firefox. Now, what's interesting here is that they've actually removed the GNOME Tour. It's not here. So if you don't know how to use GNOME, that might be a problem. Now, I know I bashed the Tour earlier, but that it's not here is something that I noticed. I think it's probably a safe to say that it's not going to be that big a deal because a lot of people know to hit the super key in order to get to something on an op operating system if they don't see a button for it. And, of course, you have this button up here. Now, one of the things that is a little bit different is there's no word next to this. So this icon is actually fairly unnoticeable. So if you don't know about the super key hotkey to get to stuff, you may miss this. And usually in GNOME, there's a word called activities up here. I believe that's what it's called. And that makes it a little bit more noticeable. Now, there are two more things about RISI OS that make it a little bit different than Fedora. The first one is called Tweaks, or RISI Tweaks. So RISI Tweaks is a replacement probably for GNOME Tweaks and also the extensions applications. So 
This is a conglomeration of several different things that you'd probably want to download if you use Fedora. So you'd want the GNOME Extensions Manager, you'd want GNOME Tweaks. These things would allow you to make customizations to your GNOME desktop environment. This, of course, comes installed by default, and there was a link to it in the welcome screen. So what this application allows you to do is change the theme, change the fonts, change the layout so you can change how it functions with workspaces, change what happens in the bar, change what happens with the cal calendar and stuff like that up there. You can change how the mouse and keyboard work and some of the settings that go along with that. And you can change what the windows look like so you can have it so that your windows action key is something different. You can change it so that different clicks do different things. One of the things you won't find here is a minimize option because that is given to you by default and that is the way it should be. GNOME by default does not give that to you, so that is an improvement here at least. This application also gives you an option to manage the extensions that are installed. Now, it does not have the functionality of the GNOME Extensions Manager, which actually allows you to install extensions right from the application. That'd be cool to have that kind of integrated here, because then it's all in kind of one place, but it might add a little bit too, mu too much complexity. But this does at least give you the option to manage the extensions that are installed. So as you can see, there are several extensions installed, including dash to dock and the sound input and output device chooser thing, which you'd actually see up here in this, which is this thing here. We also have some additional scripts here. So Rizzy scripts, things to install Brave, Chrome, Edge, Opera, and Vivaldi. I'm not sure why these things are here, honestly. I'm not sure that this part really fits in with the rest of the application. It just seems kind of out of place, but at least it gives you the option. And then there's a place here for the developer to have some experiments, kind of like a labs thing that allows users to kind of use like a beta version of this application. So that is Rizzy Tweaks. The other thing that is different in Rizzy that is not the same in Fedora is when you open up a terminal. Now, if you open up a terminal like so, you'll see that first of all, NeoFetch pops up right away and they've done a good job of making sure that their logo is here. But also the prompt is different. Now, usually when the prompt is different, you can assume probably that they're using a different shell. In this case, they are in fact using ZSH. So that is a completely different shell than what Fedora uses. But Fedora obviously uses Bash. This is ZSH. And, and as a ZSH fan, I like this change quite a lot. I'm not a big fan of that prompt. I would change that. But there aren't a lot of distributions that ship with ZSH by default. And this is one of them. And that makes me happy. If for no other reason than I think that ZSH should be used by more people. So that's just, you know, a personal thing. So those are the things that are truly different with Rizzy from Fedora. Other than that, you're going to see a lot of familiarity here. If you've used Fedora before, this is very much Fedora with some new user facing tweaks added on top of it. Uh, that Rizzy tweak tool, the better welcome app, which is just one of the best welcome apps that I've seen in a long time. The Rizzy scripts that they've included so that you can install a whole bunch of different things, which are really, really nice. Again, something that is very much focused on new users, but is also good for returning users who don't want to have to install that stuff by hand. So those are the things that really stood out when it comes to Rizzy OS. Now, I'm sure there are a few things there that I didn't miss. I only used it for about an hour or so, but I have to say that I'm really impressed because when you base your distribution on something else, especially when you're basing your distro on something that is as popular as Fedora, you really have to do something to differentiate yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to be Fedora. And then there's the question of why would I even bother? You know what I mean? Why would I use this and not just use Fedora? Because Fedora is going to have a better support. Like if you have problems with Fedora, you can go to the Fedora forums and have all your support questions answered and people aren't going to say, well, you're not actually using Fedora. With Rizzy or any distribution based on Fedora or Ubuntu or whatever, you're going to have a different time trying to find support because you're using a much smaller distribution and you're not really using the base distro anymore because you're using something different, right? So when you base your distribution off from something different, you really have to give your users some reason to use it. You have to differentiate yourself somehow. And Rizzy has done a very, very good 
job of that because one of the things that Fedora doesn't do a very good job of is explaining itself to new users and giving new users options to set their system up. They expect you to be able to install Fedora and know exactly what you're supposed to do right out of the box. Things like enabling the third-party repos, enabling Flathub, installing all of your applications and stuff like that. And while that's a fairly good assumption for most people, probably you're going to understand that you need to do those things if you have used Linux for any amount of time. If you're brand new to Linux and you stumbled upon Fedora as your first distro, it's not as new user friendly as it could be. And Rizzy has done some of that for Fedora and it's done a really good job. So to the developer, bravo. I really do like it. So that is Rizzy OS. I'm assuming I probably mispronounced it for the entire video. If I did, I apologize for that. If you have comments about this distribution, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd really like to hear from you. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at LinuxCast. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, both of those links will be in the video description along with all of my other social media links. That is right below the like button. If you can possibly hit that like button, it would really help me out. It really does help the channel. I can't even begin to tell you how much. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LinuxCast. Just like all of these fine people, thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. I truly do appreciate it. Without you guys, these videos just probably wouldn't happen because I'd have no motivation to do so. And the support just really, truly does mean so damn much. So thank you guys for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.